somebody sneaking up behind me. <laughs> what are you doing, honey? You're going to get scared if you come up here. Yeah, you're going to get scared if you come up here. You need to go, go hide in the woods somewhere, babe. So I know a lot of you guys aren't deer hunters, but if you are a deer hunter or know a deer hunter, go ahead and send them this video because that's what we're going to talk about today. We're going to talk about our deer management practices out here and a whole bunch of inf different information, a whole bunch of information blah, 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 that I'm going to shove down your throat as quickly as I can. I'm going to talk about the number one deer food that we have found after years of testing and especially the past year and a half out here, what deer really like to eat the most, not just attract them, but what they like to eat. Number two, I'll talk to you about our plantings because we do a lot of plantings out here for the whole property. Basically, 90% of the property is set up for wildlife and deer management. 10% is our house <laughs> and, and this area for us. Um, what we're actually planting out here, the seeds that we're using, the different clovers and so forth. I'll talk to you about the game cameras we use. We have cameras all over this property and for years we've been testing out these cameras. There really is no one winner. So I'll show you the ones that I use, the ones that I currently like, the new ones for 2023-24 season. Okay, so in the description below, I'm gonna build one page because there's so much crap and I know I'm gonna forget something. So if I forget to list something, drop a comment down below and say, hey doc, you showed a, a deer feeder. What deer feeder do you like? So I'll show you the deer feeders because we use deer feeders and then we put solar power on all the deer feeders so we never have to worry about the batteries. They stay out all year round. We fill them up and we may have to go out every three months and fill them up. Link to it. Some of this stuff you really can't find links to because like the, the one of the attractants that I like, I had to go to Tractor Supply this morning. I got a funny story and asked them to custom order it because the store that's across town has two bags in stock and they don't have any. And there's a guy that came in before me, the day before me, and he wants to buy a whole pallet of this stuff. I was talking to the store manager. She said, she said, you're the third person this week that's asked for this product. So anyways, I'll talk about that in a minute. Okay, so if, you don't, if you're not familiar with our channel, if you're new to our channel, um, this is a 40 acre farm property that we bought. It was completely abandoned. And we have done, spent a year and a half, not only doing the house, let me show you the before and after of the house. So we did a full remodel on the house, but we spent a ton of time. I'd say probably 75% of that time and energy was devoted to the property between restoring the pond, putting in gravel roads, actually putting in fields that didn't exist here, restoring a barn that looked like absolute crap. <laughs> um, just all kinds of different things that we've had to do out here. It's been a long year and a half finally to the point that things have settled down a little bit so i figured i'd just walk around and show you what we're doing out here we call it the rack ranch for a reason the reason why i call it the rack ranch is because this place from springtime all the way through the rut is just loaded with bucks we have these bachelor groups that consistently come into our property because we're one of the few properties around here that actually solely manage for deer and for turkey i guess Turkeys have been on a little bit of decline because of raccoon population, and we've had to really go out aggressively after these raccoons. Okay, so where am I gonna start? Let's start off with um, the feed. I've done a lot of research, and I'll just tell you right up front, probably the two top performers are gonna be apple-flavored corn, roasted soybeans, which a lot of people don't know, and a little bit hard to get, and then a mixture of that. So they have a, um, a one or two mixtures out there in 40 pound bags. That's a mixture of a corn and a roasted soybean. And I think they have a persimmon flavor and then they have maybe a sugar beet flavor mixed in there too. Excellent stuff. And it's not just, it's not just that deer prefer it. In other words, I'm not putting out four piles of something and then the deer picks which one. I'm talking about daily visits where they come in and they eat it. I mean, they eat it and they eat it. It's good for them. You're providing nutrients, you're providing protein. Um, you can actually put mixed minerals in with you want, but that is a core base food. I'm not talking about an attractant or putting cherry Kool-Aid on corn because the deer come in and they like it. I'm talking about a core so feed. Those are my, those are our winners. Apple flavored corn. Now I get, we get ours either at uh, Tractor Supply or Walmart. Now Walmart, sells these 30 pound bags, which we really like, especially I do, because I'm old and lazy. But I can transport those 30 pounds, get up on a ladder, put it into the thing a lot easier than I can a 40 or 50 pound. My local feed store sells 50 pound bags of corn. Dude, they're a pain in the butt. <laughs> Even Ryan, my son, hates to do them because they're so heavy. So while it may not be the best value, 
the Walmart 30 apple flavored corn in the 30 pound bags is a winner for us. Next, let's talk about the game cameras. I have a ton of game cameras. Cameras? Let me grab my phone. Uh, let me grab my phone and I'll go ahead and just show you, just so you know I'm not pulling your leg here. So this is my Spy Point app. And you can see all the cameras. Act, these are just the active cameras I have here. So I've got all those active cameras under Spy Point. I really like Spy Point. Not so much that their cameras are better than anyone else. I like the simplicity of their app. And that's one of the things that kind of bugs me about some of these companies. Their apps just, some of the language in there and some of the settings and the accessibility is just not nice. So if I go to photos, one thing I do like about the Spy Point arrangement is they're gonna show me today. So I get to see all my photos from today from all my cameras. So I can look through here and it has three across, three across, which I like. Not all the apps will let you do that. Three across, three across, and I can just scan through here and I can see today. Now these are all my cameras that I'm looking at and just this is all today, <laughs> okay? So I'm going through here and scanning and I can pull any of them up. Almost all trail cameras these days, if you're gonna spend over a hundred bucks on them, they're pretty much close as far as performance goes. They're all around that 25 to 30 megapixel image quality, the cameras are good. A lot of them, most of them now include video and it's actually high resolution 1080 video. Um, so there isn't a huge distinction, I don't think. The biggest distinction I think now is what started to happen with the connectability. And that is like uh, the new Flex series from Spy Point. I'll put a link to that down below. I'm really liking the Flex series. Not only because I can get it, I really like solar guys. If Get away from me, <laughs> a bumblebee or whatever. Um, I really like the solar cameras. There is some limitation on the solar cameras because if you put it in the dark woods and it's not facing it, obviously it's not gonna charge well, but no more batteries for me. I've just gone solar on almost all my cameras, but the, but the Flex series, it will search and figure out what network. So like I used to buy the little micro spy point cameras and you had to decide between AT&T and Verizon. And now everyone's starting to go to that roaming thing where it picks the strongest signal and locks into that signal, which is nice. So I can put my cameras now anywhere I want out here and I get a good cellular signal. Next, let's talk about an attractant. So whenever we go out and we put out a game camera, the first thing I do, let me go grab a bag real quick. Okay, so a few years ago, I came up with a concept of the majority of hunters are, don't have the luxury that I have, which is I have two UTVs, I have 40 acres, and I have a road system, and I can load the UTV up with corn. I wanted something lightweight and compact. Let me get this sun off of here. I wanted something lightweight, compact, that had a real high odor content. Not necessarily food, but odor. And that's when we came up with Moonshine Gold. Now, Moonshine Gold, the whole premise of this is the way that it's packaged. Now these are two pound packs, they're real lightweight. And the odor of this is so strong when you open it, it has that sicky, sweet corn, it smells like a sweet corn cereal. This has dry flaky corn distillate inside of it, it has molasses particles inside of it. And man, let me tell you what, when you have a game camera, what I want you to do is, if you have your game camera facing this way, just sprinkle a line of this, and you can go 20, 30 feet and put out a line of this. And what you're doing is, is you're, you're putting out a scent zone that'll actually go, and it'll actually get drawn and just carries through the woods. This calls the deer in. So, you'll call them in, they typically go up, they start licking it, and they do this tongue thing where they go It's the funniest thing to watch. Um, but I will tell you that if I have if I have roasted soybeans They'll come to this and they'll smell it and then they'll go right over to the roasted soybeans So this isn't like a food source. This is an attractant. I want you to understand that So if you put this out <laughs> and then you put roasted soybeans and you put apple flavored corn The deer will be drawn in long distance because of this odor But then once they get there, they're gonna be eating either the roasted soybeans or the apple flavored corn I guarantee it Okay, so here's a perfect example. This is, the, this is the feeder that's at the end of my pond. I can actually sit in my sunroom and watch this at night. I have a pair of binoculars. It's the coolest thing. I can sit here and watch the deer. Let me spin the camera around just so you can get a perspective here. <laughs> it's pretty cool, isn't it? So, and then right here, 
we have our cameras. This is that uh, the flex camera that I linked to below. Now that one is not solar, by the way, that flex. That, I bought that one, that was my first one when they first released it. And then my next two flexes are actually the ones with the solar panel on top. So normally I have been having those bucks come in here, but there's not a lot of corn on the ground because the does and the babies are coming in here and eating it. So let's see if I can draw them in. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put this, these roasted soybeans out but they don't have a lot of aroma. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put out a line of moonshine gold and I'll put it right up to the camera too. I want you to remember, this is not necessarily something that they're gonna come in and just sit there and eat and eat and eat. This will draw them in. They'll say, oh, there's food over there. And then they come in, they love the soybeans, man. They love these roasted soybeans and they love the apple flavored corn. Now what I'm going to do is I've got that all put out. Now I'm just going to take and put basically in line with my camera. I'm just going to put out a line of moonshine gold. I love this stuff. Who is? Um, either tonight it's going to send me the videos so either I'll download the videos from my phone or else tomorrow morning I'll look at them and see what came out let's hope they come out there's some real there's some decent little bucks here so let's talk food plots for a minute let's talk about seeds and what we've been planting and what we've been testing here for the past year and a half and actually before that but let me go over what we're planting and I'll show you these fields up here it's actually pretty cool All right, so we call this area the upper 10. This is basically the upper 10 acres, and pretty much the whole thing is set up for the wildlife. This whole large field over here we call the buck field because I've had, I got a picture where I've got five eight point bucks or better standing shoulder to shoulder, and there's one baby deer in front of them right here in like early evening. It's absolutely cool. This field here, ever since, now this was trees and clumping fescue. We had to till this up once, but ever since then, we do regenerative farming where we don't till any ground. This is mostly clover right now. There's a little bit of clover, a little bit of rye. I did have some brassica or purple top turnip in here, but it's kind of, the clover really overtakes it. And that's why my number one choice is gonna be white Dutch clover. And I'll put a link to the ones I use down below. Fantastic results. This stuff is just crazy. Now I have to come out here and cut this about depending on the rain about every two weeks or so and i just finished cutting a little while ago but let's look isn't that crazy huh look at that and they are in here every night you can see where they've just been in here eating they're in here every night just tearing this up this is the upper field we call this field the high potassium field because it's high in potassium again we really struggled to get stuff to grow up here until we got a lot of rye grass established and then uh, clover. And every night, I want to show you a picture, but every night I have usually 20 to 40 deer up in this field and sometimes half of them will be bedded down sleeping. It is the coolest, it is the coolest thing with the pictures that I get up here. Again, I got cameras over here. I got a camera over here. <laughs> And then we have a large cornfield up there which died off from the drought. Which is fine because we're going to leave that just standing all winter. They'll come in, they'll eat on the corn, they like to bed up there. Then we have an orchard over here that they destroyed. We have to replant the orchard with deer guards on it. All right, so if you're still hanging with me, we're, this is that whole field area. We have this little low stand here. I have two more stands like this and they're taller. The one in the very, very back your feet, this, your feet are about four feet here. The next one, your feet are at 12 feet. And then the redneck skyscraper I'll show you, your feet are at 16 feet. <laughs> it's way up there. And it overlooks the nastiest, thickest, kind of woody kind of area. Back. It's so cool. Here's just a quick side note. A lot of people ask why I don't have a tractor, because I don't need one. 
I have a UTV. I actually have two UTVs now. And we use, this is basically our UTV equipment yard. And I don't use this a whole lot. I might use it once a year. We don't do a lot of tilling. We're regenerative farming. We don't really till up the ground. But once in a while, you know, I'll use my tines and I'll sort of scrape an area, open it up to when I have to reseed it. I might have to disc it a little bit so I have a disc. I have a spray tank if I need to spray something that goes on the back of my UTV. This is all my equipment that I need right here. Everything that I'm using is right here and that's it. And then I attach it to a UTV. So instead of spending, instead of spending sixty, seventy thousand $70,000 on a nice tractor and then having to go out and buy all that equipment, basically I've got, no, $3,000, three or, three or $4,000 with equipment here. And then just depending on your UTV. Now we started off with one of the cheap access UTVs that we bought at Lowe's for 9,900 bucks. And that was it. And then we've worked this whole property just with the UTV and with that equipment. We do not need, if I need a skid steer, I rent a skid steer and I'll do that probably twice a year to repair roads or whatever I do. Now I did upgrade finally for Father's Day. I've been waiting and waiting. I did upgrade to the new John Deere Gator, which I absolutely love. This thing is absolutely fantastic. This is the XUV 590M. I don't know, maybe someday I'll do a review on it, but man, this thing rides nicer than my wife's Volvo. <laughs> That's how it is. And this thing is rated to, they say 70 miles an hour. And I'm like, dude, if you ever see me driving 70 miles an hour in this thing, I, I've been drinking way too much. So anyways... That's basically what we use as far as equipment out here. Next, if you follow my channel, you'll know that this is the bald spot. And what is the bald spot? When we bought the property, we went up on satellite view and I went, what is that? <laughs> Apparently this was a little area. I don't know if someone had put in a food plot out here, but we turned it into a food plot. So I grabbed one of my tines, came up here, dissed it. The problem we've had up here is Bermuda grass first. So we had to kill off the Bermuda, came in here. But then all my corn from my feeder started growing and this was way up high, so I had to cut it. And now we've reseeded it again with what I told you. The primary thing we're putting out here is we're putting out clovers and we're putting out like purple top turnip out here. Those are the two main things that I want right now in this late summer, early fall that will take me into the fall. And you can see, and you can see all the germination that's coming up. We finally had some rain and now we've got a bunch of germination here. And this is going to be clover and purple top turnip all in here. So let me just walk down here. I don't want to go in the woods too much over here, but I want to walk down. Now off of here is where we have our redneck skyscraper. Now this is the one where your feet are actually, the base of the stand is 16 feet up in the air. <laughs> it gets up there. So here's the bald spot. We can see the bald spot. This path comes down. If you'll notice, I actually have put clover on my path. So anytime we open up a lane in here, we also come in and we put clover down on the lane. But that's the redneck skyscraper down there. I really don't want to go down there right now. But you can see that the bottom of that stand where your feet are is 16 feet up in the air. It's a fantastic view up there. So I wanted to touch on real quick, I want to talk about, someone's probably going to say, Doc, you need to take some of those does. You can get permits and take some. We don't need to do that. We're not in Texas. This isn't a thousand acre ranch where it's dry and there's not a lot of browse and the deer struggle and we need to manage our buck to doe ratio. That's not how it works here. And that's sort of a, not a myth, but a misconception when you get into an area like this where we're in Northeast Georgia or you're in North Carolina and you have lush, lush cover and you have tons of browse around for the deer. And then on top of that, you're actually planting acres upon acres upon acres for the deer browse and you have four water sources for the deer. Our property and our land can carry an unlimited amount of deer here. If, it, if that wasn't the case, those fields would be bare. They're thick and they're lush. And every night I have 50 to 100 deer up there coming through there. Now understand something. The state of Georgia owns the deer. I don't own the deer, but we take ownership of the deer. We take care of them. Same thing with the pond. We take care of the fish in the pond. We treat this sort of as a preserve. Last year I saw over 1,000 deer. I took one buck. That's it. That's kind of what we do here. No one's allowed to take any of my does. They're our kids, we take care of them. But the bucks are not residential. They'll be residential and they'll hang out here, you know, uh, spring and summer, but when that rut comes around, they're gone. They will go and they will travel miles and miles and miles looking for does and heat. But at the same time, I'm gonna have, because I have a heavy doe population, I'm gonna have all my neighbor's bucks coming on my property, not only to eat some of this nice green stuff out here, but they're going to be looking for my does too, because they're going to be going into and they're going to be going into estrus in different cycles and at different times. 
And that's what we've learned. Last year, I counted over a hundred bucks on our property sitting up in the stand, over a hundred. And some of those bucks I only saw one time, one time, that's it. Most of the time, a buck will come into my area and he'll be here for a week or two weeks and he'll work this area, work the does, and then he's gone. He's a mile or two down the road working another property. So it's kind of a misconception. If someone comes on your property and you've got 20, 40, or even 100 acres, whatever it is, and you're in a lush area like this and you actually plant for the deer and you take care of them, if they tell you to start taking does, my personal opinion is turn your turn around and walk away. If you have a land that has a carrying capacity for it, you do not need to harvest your doe population and you need to understand there's one thing that will really bring bucks during the rut onto your property and that's does. So that's what we want. We want as many does here as possible. Anyways guys, this was a lot of information to get on film. So I hope it helped you out. Maybe you enjoyed it a little bit. Hell, there's nothing else on TV. So hope you enjoyed it. Talk to you later. Duh.